This is the first page of Susan's lecture about doubles around the table. It shows the doubles available to each of the four seats. They include the takeout double, negative double, balancing seat double, and the support double. This is the second page of Susan's lecture. The first double we discussed is the takeout double. This is a defensive bid that is used by the bidder in the direct seat. It shows an opening hand, shortness in the opener's suit and four-card support for any unbid majors and three-card support for any other unbid suits. The next double we discussed was the negative double. This is not a defensive bid because it is used by opener's partner, the responder. The number of points it shows depends on the level where opener will need to rebid. This double applies only when the player in the direct seat has overcalled with a suit bid. Conventionally, if overcaller bids 1 NT, the penalty is for penalty. We've also discussed another competitive double the support double. This is the opener's double, and it follows a bid made by the person occupying the seat between the responder and opener. It show exactly three card support for responder's major suit. It is absolutely forcing, so it must not be left in. Now we come to the double used by the advancer, overcaller's partner. This is the responsive double, and it has some very specific requirements. This double is used when the opener bids one of a suit, left-hand opponent overcalls a suit, or might double, and responder raises the opener's suit. So if West had three spades here, he would just bid three spades. However, or I, I'm sorry, not, not three spades, two spades. However, this auction says, oh, goodness, I don't have three spades, partner. What I have is four or more cards in each minor. Please pick. Usually, if I'm sitting in this situation, I hold four cards in each minor, and if I pick one, it'll be the wrong one. So I use the double to say, partner, I have the two unbid suits. Please choose. Now, there's another, there's another scenario that will deny a spade fit in this particular case uh, by the advancer. And it goes like this, one heart, double, east virtually, unless he has the big double, and it's not likely when everybody around the table is bidding, it's unlikely that uh, East has the big double here. Although I suppose anything's possible because there are some people who will bid on air. I'm, I'm sure you've noticed that. So if, if partner doubles and then South raises here, the, the responder raises one level in that, in that uh, situation. Now the double by West says, I know you have four spades, partner. I don't have four spades. What I have are four cards in each minor. I don't have four spades. Please pick your better minor. See how helpful that is? If West has only six points, how in the world is he going to be able to get both of those suits into the auction? Particularly if he picked one and partner couldn't support it. So all of a sudden, this double allows you to get two suits off your chest, just like the negative double does when opener bids a club and overcaller bids a diamond and responder doubles, showing four cards exactly in each major. This is similar here. This double shows four cards or more in each of the, of the I'm, I'm going to put unbid in quotes, suits. Because East effectively bid spades here. He should have four spades for that double. So he has effectively said, I'd like to play spades, but I only have four. Wes says, uh-uh, don't have four spades with you, partner, but I do have four of each of the minor suits. Now, what happens uh, after? Susan, Ella yeah. has a question uh, in the chat that says, uh, what does OBOR mean? OBAR means opener bid and was raised. Okay. O-B-A-R, OBAR. 
that is the most common situation where the responsive double is used. And many people will tell you that is the only situation where the double by the person sitting in the fourth seat is responsive. But there are other situations where that double can be responsive by partnership agreement. You know, there's my phrase again, partnership agreement. Everybody, everybody I know gets tired of hearing me say that. But there are a lot of things in this game that are played according to however you and your partner want to play it. So now then, how, how does the overcaller or the takeout doubler proceed after partner has used a responsive double? Well, first off, minimum hands make minimum bids. So uh, if he has a, a, a good hand, he should jump a level when he picks a suit. He's an overcaller. He might have only eight or nine points, right? But if he's a takeout doubler, he has an opening hand. So if he has a, an opening hand with a fit, then he should probably uh, not be afraid of bidding at the three level. If, for instance, it's gone one heart, double, two hearts, double, pass. Uh, then he should not be afraid of bidding at the three level. Mm -hmm. With a really good hand, he should jump a level. But remember that the responsive double and the use of it does not often result in a game contract because you're the fourth person to bid around the table. With that many people bidding, either somebody's sandbagging or there's going to be a part score play. So responsive doubles are not often used in an attempt to find a game contract. They are looking for the safest place to play. In other words, the place where they have a fit in case the hand belongs to them. So, all right, the responsive double is a competitive double, in other words. Your partner has competed by either doubling or overcalling and converted this auction into a competitive auction. So responsive doubles are used only in competitive auctions. Here's one of those hands that I, I was talking about. We talked about what this particular auction means. One heart, double. I have four spades and at least tolerance, three card support um, for the uh, other unbid suits. Two hearts, double. I don't have spades with you, partner, but I have at least four cards in the minors. Please pick. But here's a situation that often happens. One club, double. One heart, double. Is this double responsive? A lot of people will say no. But... If you have partnership agreement, you might use this double when West has both four heart, uh, four diamonds and four spades. We know this is not a perfect world, right? East might have only three spades to use the takeout double. I know it's a rule when you use the takeout double, but you have four cards in any unbid major. If a minor was opened, you may have only three cards in one of them. Uh, and that's, if you wait for the perfect hand, you're going to wait a long time. Sometimes you, you use takeout doubles when your shape is almost perfect, but not quite. And, well, maybe partner will have to play a 4-3 fit. Playing 4-3 fits builds character. Um, they're not my favorite thing to play, but... Um, when I learned to play back in the dark ages, we played a lot of 4-3 fits. Uh, they're called Moisian fits after Alfonso Moyes, uh, who named them such. Um, but I digress. Now, in this case, West would use the double here if he held four cards in each of the unbid suits, giving his partner a choice, saying, if you don't have four spades... You ought to have four diamonds. You're short in clubs. You should have something in spades, hearts, and diamonds. 
So if you have four diamonds and don't have four spades, diamonds would be the safer contract. So pick that one. If you have four spades though, feel free to bid spades because my double shows both four spades and four diamonds here. The two unbid suits, four cards in them. Now, if you don't have four diamonds, you're just going to bid one spade or whatever the strength of your hand dictates following this takeout double. Uh, if you don't have four cards in each one of those suits, then you'll go ahead and bid spades. But this double can be used this way per partnership agreement. Partnership agreement. Otherwise, this devil is not responsive, and what it means is up to you and your partner to decide. Now, that is the first one of the doubles that we're going to talk about that's available to the advancer. There are others. This one is the Snapdragon double here. I think it has a really cool name, but there are such things as Rosencrantz doubles, which are a bit esoteric. They have very specific requirements, and so you don't see them used very much. There was a while there when they were popular, but they just weren't used enough to be taking up room on the card and being subject to being forgotten. And that's that's what the problem is. If you pet play a lot of stuff that doesn't come up very often, then you're liable to forget it when it does and your partner uses it and you think, oh, yuck, I forgot that. I don't know. I'm going to digress for just a minute here for a little bit of history. Um, George Rosencrantz uh, was a man who was an OBGYN during his professional career. He was a physician and uh, ended up at the end of his life living in Mexico. But he worked, he was the principal developer developer of the oral contraceptive. He was that George Rosencrantz, who was responsible for a change in the lives of lots and lots of women. And he, he is the one who developed the Rosencrantz double, the very same one. He lived out his life at the end of his life in Mexico. And uh, who knew? He was also a very fine bridge player. And he's the one who came up with the idea for that double. So in case you're ever playing a trivia game and, and you need to know that, now you know it. Now, the Snapdragon Double, I don't know how it got its name, have no idea, but it's called that just for convenience. It needed a name, so that's what they gave it. Now, it's used by the advancer when three suits have been bid, and the advancer is the fourth person to take a call. For example, one heart, two clubs, two diamonds, double. Notice that South needs at least 10 points to bid at the two level, doesn't he? That's still true. This double shows five or more spades, five or more cards in the unbid suit, but only six or more points. Say, partner, if you have three spades with me, we have a spade fit. And he also promises tolerance. Tolerance for a known five card suit is either three small or honor doubleton. So this double shows very specific holdings by the advancer. Now, if these doubles confuse you, then don't worry about using the Snapdragon. It doesn't come up very often. Sometimes you see this, uh, and it normally, if you have three card support for partners over called suit and six points, you're just going to raise his suit. But if you want to use this double, it shows at least six points. I mean, after all, this two club overcall here uh, should show an opening hand or very close to it. You have a chance to play the contract the same as the opponents do. Get that spade suit in there by using 
the Snapdragon Double. It requires only six points, but it requires five cards in the suit that you're showing that has not been bid. If you had only four of them, you would just have to raise Partners Minor. Remember, no new major suits at the two level without five cards in them. So this double shows at least six points, at least five spades, and tolerance, meaning either three small or honor doubleton for partner's club suit. Here we have another example. One diamond, one spade by north, two clubs by responder, double. Hearts are now the unbid suit, aren't they? This is the unbid suit. Three suits have been bid. I have the fourth one. This devil absolutely denies three card spade support. Don't be tempted to use a new toy when you have support for partners over called suit. The, the relationship between the overcaller and advancer is different from the one between the opener and the responder. When opener bids, especially a minor, he's asking responder to describe his hand, to bid a four card major if he has it. Uh, let's look for the best place to play here, partner. But when overcaller bids, number one, he may or may not have an opening hand at the one level, and he's not interested in hearing about your other suit. The only thing he wants to know is, do you have support for my overcalled suit? If you do, we have a good chance to, to play the contract here. He, if you, it, unless you have a really good hand as advancer saying, I have a good hand here, partner, but I don't have necessarily support or your suit, uh, then you just need to pass because uh, your partner may or may not have an opening hand. So now, using this double, South should have six or more points. He should have five or more hearts. And he should have tolerance for spades. Tolerance is not the same as support. Because if he has support for spades, he doesn't use the snapdragon double. He bids two spades. When you're in this kind of situation, you support with support. Sometimes it's tempting when you have a new toy, particularly one that has a, a, an interesting name like the snapdragon double. Uh, to haul it out and use it because you want to show it off that you know this new bid and I've got a chance to use it and, and I want to show it off. But if you have support, don't do it. The Snapdragon Double should never be used when you have support for Overcaller's suit. Notice if he is to bid hearts directly here rather than doubling, he would promise the five card suit that the double does, but he would need 10 points. What do you think the likelihood here is he's going to have 10 points on this auction? This is an opening hand. This is 10 or more points. This is a one level overcall, so it's eight or nine. South doesn't have an opening hand or doesn't have 10 points. There's no way he can have 10 points. But using the double means that you can show a suit without actually having to bid it. That's what's nice about doubles in lots of these situations. So I've got some examples to show you here because it can be confusing when we've got two of them here at the same time. We're gonna talk about which one is which here and why they apply in this situation. Here's the auction. North hand, east hand, south hand, west hand. North opens a heart. I think everybody can see why that would be the case. East over calls two clubs. Yes, I know he only has 10 high card points, but he has a, a hand with opening hand values. Six card minor suit. And lots of shape. 
Now let's look at the south hand here. He has eight points. That's pretty good. Two clubs, two hearts, eight points and a doubleton, four card support that doesn't qualify for a jump to three. So two hearts is his call. I have heart support for you, partner. Double. Showing at least four cards in each of the unbid suits. This is a responsive double because three suits have not been bid, so it can't be Snapdragon. This is the classic opener bid and raised. One heart, two any, two hearts. If I'm holding this hand here as East, I hate covering up a four card spade suit, but I can't double for takeout because then my partner will bid diamonds. You know, I mean, I don't know about you guys, but that's the way my life goes. If I doubled on this hand, my partner would bid diamonds and then I'd be in the suit. If I rebid clubs, that shows a much stronger hand than what I have. So if I want to intervene in this auction, I have to bid two clubs. Two hearts. Opener has bid and raised. Obar. And now it comes around here to West, and he has nine high card points. He has at least four cards in the, in the two unbid suits. He can't raise clubs. He can't bid spades at the two level because he only has four. But the responsive double gets both of these suits into the auction saying, well, partner, I have tolerance. This promises tolerance for your, for your suit. I would prefer to have a third one, certainly. But you might play a 5-2 fit if you don't have a fit for either one of these other unbid suits. Well, North has a kind of a minimum hand here. He's um, he's got well, he's got fourteen points, but partner just gave him a two heart raise. He's not likely to bid three hearts unless somebody pushes him. This double says I have four cards at least in unbid suits, but if I had five spades, I would bid them. Remember. If you have the sufficient number of spades that would allow you to bid them, you can. If you have the sufficient number of points. West also doesn't have the sufficient number of points unless you start counting a lot of shortness. Uh, but you and your partner haven't found a fit yet. So that's a bit premature. The double says diamonds and heart or diamonds and spades over here, partner. What do you think? Pass. Two spades. I'm happy to know that you have four spades, partner, because I happen to have four spades also. Then South might take the push to three hearts. I show it as all pass, but if I'm sitting South, knowing that my partner has five hearts and I have four in a competitive auction, I will compete to the combined number of trumps between the two hands. I would not hesitate to bid three hearts with this hand. Uh, but that's my style. It doesn't have to be your style. I would compete to three hearts because I know we have a nine card fit. If I only had three card support, I would not compete to the three heart level because my partner didn't. My partner has a minimum opening hand. Uh, if I didn't have four hearts, if I only had three of them, then I, I would pass. But in this situation, if I'm holding the South cards, I'm bidding three hearts. But that's my style. It doesn't have to be yours. But see how the responsive double works to get both of these suits into the auction. Otherwise, West would never be able to get both those suits in the auction. Is this making sense? I'm not, I'm not seeing or hearing a lot of questions. I, I know it makes sense, but now when you get to the table, you'll think, now, what was that she said? I can't remember, because that's what used to happen to me when Ron Hinkie would teach. 
And then I'd get to the table and I think, oh, Ron talked about that this, this morning and I don't know what he means here. I can't remember. So here's the next example. East opens a spade, south over calls two hearts. I think that's appropriate, don't you? Look at that nice suit. West bids two spades. Opener has bid and been raised here. And North says, eh, eh, I only have two hearts. I have a good hand. I have a hand that has 10 high card points in it. And I, I have uh, shortness in my partner's suit. What am I going to do? What am I going to do? Um, if partner has anything in the minor suits, we should be playing a minor suit, not hearts. Notice he has 10 points. And since he's doubling at the two level, that's just fine. Double, partner. I don't have hearts with you and I don't have spades. I have at least four cards in each minor suit. What do you think? Well, South doesn't like that very much, does he? He says, I don't care whether you have four cards in each minor suit. Uh, I, I have no fit with you in a minor, but I have seven hearts in my hand. I'm not really all that concerned whether you have just one or two hearts. You might even be void and I would be all right. But I know that your values are probably in the minors. I have a singleton in the opponent's suit. So I think this is worth a four heart call. Anybody here disagree with bidding four hearts with this hand after the responsive double by, by North? His points should all be in the suits that he shows. And so South bids four hearts saying, oh, singleton spade. And my partner has values in the minor suits. Janet, do you have your hand up? I did. Uh, Susan, you would go to game knowing that you possibly only have 16 points. Uh, you know, if you've opened with 12 and you know that the requirement for your partner is only six. I know well, you had that singleton in this, there. in this particular instance, uh, doubling two spades, responsive doubles as you as you get higher at the lower level, six points is right. But this responsive double forces me to the three level. So partner's going to have more than six points. Okay. Okay. Uh, I was looking at your notes here. He, he showed. Yeah. It's it it he he shows at least six points, but to be honest. He should have more because that double partner can't pass the double. Okay. So he's forcing his partner to bid at the three level. Although when South bids two hearts in my, in my book, he shows an opening hand, but still, if I'm going to force my partner to the three level, I'm going to have more than six points. The require the minimum requirement is six points, but there's really no ceiling on it. He can have more than that. And the and the bidding of the game here is based more on distribution than on actual values. South has a long suit with shortness in the opponent's suit and no fit for partner. But if my partner made a responsive double with only six points here, we'd have to have a little chat. It's one thing to be forcing your partner to the two level. It's quite another to be forcing him to the three level. If you're, go It's just like with the negative double. If you're going to force your partner to the three level, you need to have at least nine points and 10 or more would be preferable. The double shows only six, but given the level of the auction, you need to have more than that. That's a good point, Janet. Um, thank you. Anybody else have a question? OK, so does everybody see why South says, nah, I don't care if you have four cards in each minor, but I'm going to bid the game because that's where your value should be. I know that the opponents have 
at least eight spades between them and maybe nine. So I'm hoping that most, all of your values are in the minor suits. That's where they should be because the opponent should have most of the values in the spade suit. So he bids four hearts. Number one, he doesn't want to be outbid by the spade holders. I don't know about the rest of you, but every time my partner and I have hearts and the opponents have spades, we have to go to the five level to win the auction. And then that's, that's not a recipe for success. But if I'm, hold, if I'm holding this south hand, I'm bidding four hearts. Uh, it may not make, but maybe the opponents will bid four spades and go off one or two tricks. Um, so that's the reason I would bid four hearts. But if you wouldn't bid four hearts, maybe you would only bid three hearts. That's fine. That's fine. Uh, once you rebid them, North should know opening, opening hand. 10 points, I'm, I'm, I don't know whether I'd go or not uh, because I don't know that my partner's hand is this shapely. All right, let's try another one. Now we have an instance where three suits have been bid. South opens a spade, West bids two clubs. North bids two diamonds. Look at that diamond suit. Remember, two over one is off in competition. Uh, so two diamonds is not a game force here. East now doubles. He says, I do. I have three small clubs. That's, that's a tolerance for clubs, isn't it? But I also have five or more cards in the unbid suit. Notice he only has eight points, but he's only pushing his partner to the two level. That's perfectly acceptable. He has at least six. He, act, he actually has eight. He has five cards in the unbid suit, and he has tolerance support for his partner's suit in case his partner has to rebid the suit. Well, what does that tell his partner, West? It tells him, oh, my partner has five hearts. I have four hearts. This is great. We have a nine card heart fit. I don't exactly have a great hand here. I had to scrape the bottom of the barrel to get this two club overhaul. But he should be totally comfortable bidding two hearts on this auction. He knows there's a nine card fit because the Snapdragon double, the one used by the person sitting in the fourth seat, shows five cards in the unbid suit and at least tolerance for a partner suit that he bid. Perfect description of this hand. Perfect description. Two hearts. If I'm sitting north, I might bid three diamonds. Uh, I'm, I'm not going to sit still for that when my partner has opened. Of course, lesson hands always show that the opponents pass following a, when a fit has been found. But if I've got a pulse and a seven card diamond suit here, I'm, I'm not going to let them play two hearts. I'm going to bid three diamonds. My partner may or may not have any diamonds, but I'm not selling out to two hearts. Uh, the rest of you can sell out to two hearts if you want to, but I'm, I, uh, I don't do that. And I admit that I'm a little more aggressive than some people are. Maybe they'll end up playing three hearts. They have a nine card fit, and that's perfectly fine if they want to compete to three hearts. But this is the way you find this five, four heart fit when the advancer doesn't have the values to bid at the level required. It's the same kind of thing as with the negative double. When responder doesn't have a sufficient number of points or a sufficient number of cards in a major suit to bid at the level where he would need to, to bid, he can use that double to tell his partner what he has in his hand but hey, I have a little problem here. Either I don't have enough points to bid at the two level, or in the case of a, a one spade overcall, I don't have five hearts in my hand. Do you happen to have four of them? 
This is the same kind of situation. I don't have enough to bid my suit at the two level. I do have tolerance for your suit, but my double shows you my five hearts. If you happen to have a heart fit, let's play hearts instead of clubs. That is the better, the better plan. Heart scores better than clubs. You're going to have the same losers no matter which suit you play. Do you see the difference between this one and the responsive double? With the Snapdragon double, three suits have been bid. Three suits have been bid. Now, notice if, if uh, East here did not have five hearts, he would just need to bid three clubs. Because that Snapdragon double is very specific in what it shows. It requires five cards in the unbid suit and tolerance for partner suit. So if he doesn't have five cards in his heart suit, he just has to raise clubs. We can't cover everything in this game. There are some eventualities that we just can't deal with very well. So now then, we have another example. This time West is the opener. He opens one club, North over calls a heart. Notice he's got a very nice hand also. And East bids one spade, promising five of them. He would use the negative double if he had only four. West is still not thrilled. He says, eh, I, I know you got five, but I don't have three. South doubles, saying, I have five cards in the unbid suit, which is diamonds. And I have tolerance for the suit that you opened, honor doubleton or three small. Now, this is a special situation. Notice that North has a fit in diamonds. King third, that's very nice. Anybody would be happy with that. But notice, he has a spade stop. He has a club stop. He sits and thinks for a minute and he says, I think that I would rather play one no trump. If I can make two no trump, that's a heck of a lot better than making two diamonds. Now, that may not be your choice. This is bidder's choice here. Um, I think it's reasonable considering, considering that he does have stops in all the unbid suits. This is an example where... Uh, you may find a fit in a minor suit and partner says, yeah, who wants to play a measly minor? I want to play no trump for the points I can get. Notice the lead is going to come up to his hand rather than through it because he's the declarer. That means that these kings and all these tennises are going to be safe on the opening lead. He will work very hard to try to keep West off lead as much as possible. Whether he'll be successful or not, we don't know, but we can see five diamond tricks, a club trick, one spade trick, and two or three hearts. If we can get the hearts set up before the clubs run, clubs and he's got the spade stop, so he he he's gonna have he's gonna have to play very carefully in order to make one or two no trumps but it's possible he has a club stop and a spade stop because the lead is going to come up to his hand. Does everybody see that? Does anybody have a, any questions about why North chooses no trump here? This is not required. This is somebody who is well aware of the fact that we are playing match points, not imps in a team game. In a team game, you go for the safer contract. At match points, you go for the one that pays off the best. In this case, one no trump pays off better than a diamond contract. Here is a table that I put together that shows a lot of the commonly used doubles. We have we've not talked about the maximal double or the reopening double. Uh, reopening doubles are are really important. 
basically they're used by the opening bidder when there's been an opening bid, an overcall followed by two passes. Um, and the opening, the opening uh, bidder doesn't want to sell out and, and let the opponents play in, in two, two or one or two of whatever the overcaller bid. So he reopens with a double, trying to get his partner to bid. The balancing double we have talked about, and after we get through support doubles next week, uh, I think we'll review balancing a little bit. It's been quite a while since we've done that, and this is an important concept. So balancing doubles have different requirements. Anything in the balancing seat where the auction is threatening to die if you don't do something, uh, has little different requirements from what these same bids would mean in any other seat. The maximal double is a very useful double that is used by the opener when there's a competitive auction and he does not have the ability to make a help suit game try because the opponents are bidding the suit directly beneath his in rank. So it's used to say, hey, partner, uh, if I bid three of the suit here, I would just be competing. But when I use this double, I'm really interested in game. I'm inviting you to bid game here if you have sufficient points because I have an invitational level hand. Uh, this one is, is useful, but it's not necessary that you play it. Uh, we talked about the takeout double and the negative double. Today, we talked about responsive and snapdragon doubles. Don't add either one of these until you think you're ready. But I've had some questions about, uh, hey, I wanted to double in the fourth seat here. This was the situation. Was that right? And in most cases, uh, people had a pretty good idea about what it should mean. Um, so I think a lot of you will be ready to add responsive doubles. I don't know very many people who use Snapdragon doubles, but if you feel like you're a man or woman enough to use it and want to, by all means do. But that's one that can wait till further down the line, uh, just like the Rosencrantz double can wait until further down the line. And you may never want to add it. That's fine too. Uh, but any of these, these are the more commonly used doubles that are not penalty doubles. Uh, I would recommend takeout, negative, and support as the ones that are the three absolutely most important ones. So um, anybody have any questions about any of this at all? If you don't, I think we've got enough time for me to pull up the answer sheet on the negative doubles and go over it. Uh, I understand if you feel like you've been overwhelmed. This is a lot of information. Uh, but if anybody has any questions, feel free to ask. Mm. Anybody? If not, I'm going to find my negative double deal here. Susan, I have a question. It's just to clarify something you said earlier. On a if somebody opens one no trump and then the next person doubles, that is a negative. I mean, that is a penalty double, is it not? Yes. Yes. Okay. And so explain to me what that hand would be at which point that person would double. Uh, I'm sorry, I didn't catch the last okay. part. I said when that the player doubles that one no trump, the uh -huh. hand would look like what? How many points? It would, it would, well, I'll tell you what. I've been burned so many times doubling one no trump for penalty that I don't do it anymore. The last time I did it, I had 19 points in my hand and I'm sitting behind the no trump opener. I doubled for penalty. The dummy had a, a five card club suit that she ran and she not only made one, she made three. Mm. So I don't double one no trump openers anymore. Okay. Uh, but what I what we do do is when there's one no trump overcall, uh, say I'm I'm the opener. Next person bids one no trump. If my partner is sitting there looking at nine ish points, he should pull out the double card. That is for penalty. It's not negative in that situation because let's think about it. If I have an opening hand and my partner has nine points, that's twenty one. Add the 15, at least, that the no trump overcaller has. 
And I'm telling you what, I don't overcall a no Trump with 15 anymore because the one no Trump overcall is the most dangerous bit in bridge. The responder is in a really good position to know whether his side has the values to double one no Trump. Uh, I've been on the receiving end of one of those doubles uh, more, co- more times than I care to admit, and it isn't fun. Uh, so instead of bidding over one no Trump, as responder, when you've got nine or more points, uh, just pull out that double card. Odds are pretty good that that no Trump bidder is in deep trouble. So uh, that's something to think about. But I don't double a one no Trump opener anymore because between the one no Trump opener and my hand, when I double, I show equal or better. And I never do it with only 15 because then it'll be my luck that the opener has 17. As I said, I did it with 19 because I thought for sure I could set that, set that. I couldn't. I couldn't. The responder had the lion's share of the remaining points and my partner had nothing, nothing. They made three double for a top and yours truly got a zero. So Think long and hard before you double one no Trump for penalty. Okay, thanks. All right. If we have just a few minutes here, uh, let me put this on reading view. Someone has asked me to go over these uh, questions here at the end of the last slide set on negative doubles. Let me put this on reading view so you don't have to look at. Let's see. Let's start with these right here. Your partner opened a diamond and your right-hand opponent overcalled two clubs. How do you respond with the following hands? Well, I have four spades in my hand, don't I? I also have five hearts. Now, remember, in the case of one diamond by your partner and two clubs by the overcaller, when you use a negative double, you only promise one four-card major. But in this case, you have both of them. So it doesn't matter which one your partner bids. You're going to have a match. So I'm going to double with this hand. I'm going to double here. Hopefully a partner will bid hearts or spades. He should. If he opens a diamond, normally he's looking for a major suit fit. Hi, this is Susan. Thanks for stopping by the Oklahoma Collective's YouTube channel. Basically, this channel shows recordings of our free one-hour bridge lessons for advancing players that we offer every Saturday morning at 9 a.m. Central Time. If you would like to join us, send your contact information to the email address shown on the screen, and we'll be happy to send you the link. If you would like to follow our channel and be notified when a new recording is uploaded, just click the Oklahoma Collective button below. Thanks for stopping by. Bye.